Okay, what do we make of the companies that had the misfortune of reporting during this big meltdown? Take Centene, the health plan provider focused on government-sponsored programs like Medicare, Medicaid, with a stock that had been red hot before people started panicking. Centene reported two days ago, even though the company delivered a solid top and bottom line beat, the stock got slammed. Why? Because their full year earnings forecast was thought by some to be a bit light. And that's not what you want to see in a turbulent market. However, if you're really worried about the impact of tariffs and the Fed's rate hikes, Centene's exactly the kind of stock you want to own here. So let's take a closer look with Michael Nidorf. He's the chairman and CEO of Centene. Get a better sense of the quarter where the company said it. Mr. Nidorf, welcome back to Mad Money. Thank you, Jim. Good to see you. Good to see you, Michael. Love to see you. All right. Uh, sometimes in this earnings period, there have been not, there's been not enough time to reflect. And that means people sell. Uh, I went through the quarter, and darn it, I thought it was a good one. So maybe you can walk me through where either I'm either wrong or right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. There were a couple issues that I don't think t people took time before they wrote their notes and questions to understand. One was the taxes, the tax rate. If you look at the gap, we had like a $24 million tax. Right. If you look at the adjusted, it was 490. Okay. okay. Now, so they said, they looked at the 24, said you had a tax benefit. Well, we didn't. What happened is we took a deduction for the closing cost for Fidelis. For Fidelis, which is okay. that which gigantic is, acquisition, which, is which you said. $400 million. And you said that the acquisition's going right. well. People didn't seem to hear that. They just talked so, about the adjustment. So they thought we made earnings and beat it. They didn't. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. The second thing they didn't, I don't think they fully understood. We had a one-time gain from a risk adjustment for the uh, in-home support services program that had been discontinued in California. Okay. We also had a one-time expense on the uh, veterans uh, mm. program that we shut down. And so the, the one was $140 million the gain. There was a $110 million expense. Now, we don't like to take one-time gains and put it in the earnings because we don't think that's appropriate. Right. Then they'd have a complaint. So we took an additional $30 million that was still surplus in that and put it into our foundation. So it was a wash. Right. So when you look at it, the beat, the couple cent beat on consent was a clean beat. Yeah, definitely. We also we raised guidance on a year. We gave good guidance. Uh, we gave a sense of what would 19 look like in terms of earnings. We've already told them that we have at least $69 billion, up about nine, 10 billion over this year. So I mean, everything about it was and, strong. And I liked uh, four new states and a bunch of counties for yeah. 2019, actually pretty big, right? I mean, Pennsylvania, yeah. North Carolina, these are big states. Right, so it's all good. Okay, now, there was a line in the conference call that I really think explains even more about what's going on. You say, oh, and I just want to add that, I, I think that what's really important is we change lenses to a $60 billion company, that there's gonna be adjustments. I think a lot of people, Michael, think of your company as small. Right. But you've made some fabulous acquisitions, and now you're up there in size. Maybe people don't have people have to adjust the way they look at Centene. Yeah, I couldn't. I'm happy you brought that up. We're we're, we're pushing to be a, a Fortune 50 company. Right. And when you have that kind of, we're going to do 70 billion plus next year. When you have that kind of scale and size, you're going to have things that come up that you write off, and things. it's just normal. Any large company has it. Right. But I think people still see us as this little 10 billion dollar company. We were. Four years ago. Okay. All right. Now, uh, we got a midterm election coming up. Uh, I know the defense stocks were all down today because people think the Democrats are going to win. Should I be thinking, if, as I'm, if I am a Centene shareholder uh, or wanting to buy it, that if the Democrats take uh, the House, that is good for Centene? Well, I think I think there'll be some balance. I mean, I'm one, I'm an individual that believes that one one of the three branches. When it's the other party, we get better government. And I'm not saying that whether it be Democrat no. or Republican, I'm being okay. bipartisan, okay? I believe that if, if that happens, we'll see some negotiations and we'll, we'll end up with a lot of things better and our program will be that much stronger as well because there'll be solid discussions about what it should be okay. and not the political. The one comment I will make, and I've told this to them in Washington, we have moved from policy to politics. Right. Let's get back to policy. Yeah, that would be great. Now, um, t last night, Amgen, it, they have this really fabulous anti-cholesterol drug, um, Repatha. And what they did was they cut the price dramatically because they said that Medicare wasn't, uh, wasn't covering it. They didn't like it. Now, when you see a dramatic decline in price of a drug, does that hit you and say, you know what, that's now at some level that's finally reasonable for the copay. We're going we're gonna to cover it. Uh, for, uh, how does it work? We have to have a therapeutic coverage of any disease. Okay. So if there's a product that's similar to it, 
that's not as expensive, and, the, and we have a P&T committee of only physicians okay. who make that decision. And they say, that product should now be added to it. It's done. We don't make that decision. I, I depend see. on physicians to do it. We are very much physician-driven. Well, that's great. And the last question I have is, it, it's kind of a one that I think a lot of people do. Do people know in this country what open enrollment means? I'm not sure they do. I think some of the people now that have been signing up do get it. I mean, right. we, we've had 80% re-enrollment the last that's couple good. of years. I don't, th I don't know that they fully understand and what the process is. And the government has not made it easier. Right, and that's what I think. I'm glad you mentioned that, because that's a real problem for people watching the show and a lot of people who don't. That's Michael Nodorf, chairman and CEO of Centene. They've got a December 14 analyst meeting. You want to be in this stock before it happens. Man Money's back in your break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.